I was drowning, Lord, you saved me and called me your own. The 76ers are in a very awkward position this season. They have the talent to make the NBA Finals if basketball were to resume this season, but they also have the potential to flame out in the first round if they can't stay healthy or never figure it out. Whether you attribute this to the awkward fit of the starting five or the supposed lack of cohesion between Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid, it's obvious that changes need to be made this offseason in order to move this team forward, barring a magical postseason run in this year's playoffs if it actually is held. In this video, we'll discuss how the 76ers can fix this awkward mess that they have going on and the specific moves that they could do or make to do just that. So first things first, the 76ers should not consider breaking up Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid this summer, regardless of what happens in this postseason, if the playoffs are actually held this year. And it's not like Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are approaching unrestricted free agency, and it's not like they've played the past five postseasons together. Despite the fact that Ben Simmons literally can't take a shot outside of 15 feet, They've been able to secure two 50-win seasons over the past two years and able to secure two playoff first-round victories over the past two years. But most importantly, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons will be 26 and 24 respectively heading into next season. Is their fit ideal at this point since Ben Simmons can't shoot? No. Does Ben Simmons' lack of a jumper hinder their potential growth with this duo? Absolutely. But there is the potential of these two winning a championship down the line when Ben Simmons develops the jumper and when Embiid gets into better shape and get back to how he was playing last season. When healthy, Joel Embiid is arguably the best center in the game. And if he can eat right and get into better shape and become better from three, he can even get better as a player and play similar to how he did last season when he averaged 28, 13, and 4. And under the right coaching, Ben Simmons can develop a respectable jump shot. The only thing stopping Simmons from being a consensus top 15 to top 10 player in the NBA is a respectable jumper which is something he will inevitably pick up down the line under the right coach and under the right coaching staff. The potential of a prime Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid is just too much to pass up on. And I don't buy the idea that a Ben Simmons in a five-out system, such as what the Rockets are utilizing, creates a championship caliber team. If you trade Joel Embiid for Bradley Beal in pieces right now, such as Bradley Beal and Davis Bertans in a signed trade, that team will be respectable in the East, but probably wouldn't be better than the Bucks, the Raptors, the Heat, or Celtics, depending on what moves they also make in the offseason. And I also feel the same way about a Bradley Beal, Joel Embiid duo as well. Trading Ben Simmons for Bradley Beal will probably bolster your chances at a title next season, and possibly for the next as well. But the ceiling of a prime Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid on the same team is higher than that of one without the other. So, if the 76ers are intent on keeping Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons for next season, what should they do to change their roster? The 76ers don't have much flexibility due to Elton Brand handsomely overpaying for to re-sign Tobias Harris and him handing out Horford that lucrative four-year deal. But although the 76ers have made a bunch of mistakes over the past few seasons, even this offseason handing out those terrible deals, there is a way to salvage this. So first things first, the 76ers have to find a taker for Al Horford's terrible deal. He's been an awkward fit on this roster because he's more of a 5 in today's NBA since he isn't quick or athletic enough to guard the newer fours in today's NBA who are more smaller and not traditional power forwards. I don't think that Al Horford is even a positive asset in today's NBA at this point. So I think that the 76ers might have to take back a terrible deal or either send out another positive asset for it and incentivize another team to take on his deal. So, keeping everything that we've discussed before in mind, here's a proposed trade that I've, a mock hypothetical trade I've proposed that the 76ers should do this offseason. It's a three-team trade between the 76ers, the Thunder, and the Blazers. The 76ers receive CJ McCollum, Trevor Ariza, and Danilo Gallinari via signing trade. The Blazers get Josh Richardson and Tobias Harris, and the Thunder get Al Horford, Zaire Smith, and a second round pick. So why do the 76ers do this? The best way to maximize Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid on the floor together is to have three outstanding three-point shooters surrounding them at all times. CJ McCollum shoots 47% on catch-and-shoot threes on 3.4 catch-and-shoot attempts per game. Trevor Reza shoots 38.4% on catch-and-shoot threes on 3.3 catch-and-shoot opportunities per game. Gatinari shoots 42% on catch-and-shoot threes on 5.7 catch-and-shoot opportunities per game. 
Additionally, C.J. McCollum can operate as a clutch time performer for this team down the stretch and operate as a closer for this team. And also note that the Sixers wouldn't be hard capped in a sign and trade for Gallinari because they're already under the cap before it's a sign and trade. As for the Blazers, they get better defensively in their backcourt without losing much offense. Josh Richardson can play in the backcourt with Dame and is a solid defender. This matters because the Blazers struggle defensively and the Blazers backcourt won't get torched defense defensively anymore with Josh Richardson playing next to Dame. And so like Josh Richardson is an offensive liability, he can definitely hold his own on that ground too. The Blazers also get Tobias Harris, who you could slide out the four to play next to Yusuf Nurkic. He's a versatile wing who's good from three and can replace the scoring void that the loss of CJ McCollum has on this team. For OKC, you take on Al Horford's deal, but you receive Zyra Smith in a second round pick as an incentive to take it on, which is something that the Thunder can afford to do because they're in a stage where they can be quite competitive, but they're still in a rebuild. So this trade is perfect for the 76ers because they get a lot of out of Horford and Tobias Harris deals and get three contributors in exchange. Also, there are three contributors who are great fits for his team. The 76ers could even look to add guys like Marvin Williams in free agency and re-sign Alec Burtz and Glenn Robinson III. But even with these moves, it's up to Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid to maximize their play and potential in order for this team to have real title hopes next season. And on the last note, the 76ers need a new coach. The 76ers should not go into every playoff series with the expectation that they'll be outcoached in every series. I have no idea who that next coach would be, but they need to be better than Brett Brown. They have to be able to make in-game adjustments, which is something that Brett Brown struggles with. They have to be able to make the players accountable, such as making Ben Simmons attempt shots in-game. And they have to be more creative offensively than Brett Brown is for this team. And with that being said, I hope the NBA resumes this season. So we can all see how far the 76ers can go this playoffs. And just in general, I'm excited for this playoffs. I don't want to see it get canceled. So I pray for everyone that's um, in recovery right now. And I hope that this situation can get sorted out. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe as usual. And cue that outro music.